welcome back friends in this video tutorial we'll be talking about degenerate primers and degenerate PCR especially okay now before understanding the degenerate PCR what we need to understand we need to understand what is called the degenerate primers okay because in degenerate PCR we use degenerate primers uh, during the PCR process. Now I assume that you understand the basic PCR process or polymerase chain reaction otherwise you cannot understand this concept. Now I am not going to talk about PCR in detail but what I am going to talk about is what is degenerate primer. We all know that for, uh, uh, for your convenience the basic PCR reaction occurs in this way. So we are having DNA strands, double stranded DNA. It is melted. So we are having single stranded DNA now primer is attached so say here it is the black this is the primer forward and reverse primers are attached after the attachment of primer then new strands are synthesized so let me write it in different picture so here third step attachment of primer or primer annealing okay here comes the primer which anneals forward and reverse then the fourth step is synthesis of other new strand right so here we go the synthesis of okay so these are the steps of a PCR general PCR but in case of degenerate PCR we choose the degenerate primer so that varies is this primer right so these primers in this case is degenerate primer okay so what do you mean by this degenerate primer is that the term degenerate it comes from uh, the codon of uh, gene so we know that codon uh, alignments that uh, degeneracy is found in codon right now what do we mean by codon codon is simply Codon, we know that there are the three different nucleotide sequences which code for an amino acid is called codon. So, for example, say there are many codons like <coughs> AU, CAU, say many different types of codons. So, each of these codon code for a particular amino acid. That's the basic concept. Now, we also know a very important feature of all this codon is that they are having a degeneracy at their third position. So degeneracy is present in the third position of a codon. That means in all this codon, what we are varying, we are varying the third nucleotide sequences, but constant rest of the. So for example, say this is if this is the case, say we can have these four variations of this codon: CAU, CAA, CAC, and CAG. Not C, sorry, C shouldn't be there. CA. No, okay, C will be there. So there are these four different variations of the same codon. And the variations that we can see is only present in this third position, right? Third position can have the variations. So this third position variation in codons are called degeneracy, right? Why they are called degeneracy? Because all of this codon, most of the cases, remember, the all of the codon that we know that there are 20 different amino acid sequences. And there can be many codons code for a same amino acid. So, many codon can code for one single amino acid sequence. That is another important fact. And why it is possible? Because we know that there can be variations at the third position of the codons. Right? Now, knowing this thing in, your, in our mind, if when we draw, when we start to make this kind of nucleotide sequences as primers, because primers are not protein sequences, they are nucleotide sequences. And in those cases, if we know the protein sequence, we can go back to the sequence of DNA using different software analysis, bioinformatics tools are there. Now, suppose we know a protein sequence. Suppose we get, we are working with a protein, and the sequence of protein is is known was DNA sequence, uh, protein sequence analysis. Then when you know the sequence of protein, we can know the sequence of 
DNA. Now, once we know the sequence of DNA, we can generate primers against that DNA. But remember, for this kind of DNA, we don't know what is going to be the exact sequence of the DNA because for the protein also, we know the sequence of protein. Now, the protein sequence suggests there is a alanine, then there is a, a glutamic acid, then there is a valine. So, these are the suppose the stretch of protein sequences. But what we know about this concept of codon is that this glutamic acid can be coded by many uh, codons, right? So, it can be coded by, I don't know what uh, the typical type of codon for glutamic acid, but suppose it can be code coded by say XXX or XXY. So, these two different type of uh, codon can code this glutamic acid. So, how can it be sure that uh, whether it is XXX or it is XXY, right? So, it can also possible that valine is coded by four different uh, codons. So, this could be a problem for us to understand or to predict the exact DNA sequence from the protein. That is the biggest problem, right? So, the bioinformatics software is going to tell us what is going to be the confidence level of what they are giving us. But still, it is going to be difficult. So, for carrying out the polymerase chain reaction for those DNA sequence to which the protein sequence is known, we need to use what is called degenerate primers, right? Now, in this case of degenerate primer, what we know that in this case, so if we draw this structure, if we know this structure, Say the structure, say for in this case, say uh, A, A, G, T, sorry, A, G, C, U, C, and so this, if this is the structure, instead of U, in case of DNA, we are having a T, so A, G, T, C, and say uh, C again, and the, in, in this case, what we get, a variation, so it could be X or Y, so suppose it could be a T or C or U not U, T or C or G for example. So, in this position, what we can have, we can have among T, C and G, one, any one of that, right? For example, after that again, we are having C, T, then again, at the third position, we can have a variation. So, this, uh, this is the change, remember. Now, this is the kind of change that we are going to observe, okay? So, let me erase this part and tell you that here we go. If we are talking about this part, say A, G, T, now in this third position, it could be T, it could be A, it could be C, any one of that. So, we cannot put T only because it could be any of that. Again, start with C, T, again in the third position, it could be say G or C. So, right? So, when we predict the structure of DNA from protein, this kind of predictions we need to make. But we are not sure whether they are going to be T or A or C or here in this position G or C. So, in every third position of that DNA sequence, we don't know what is it, right? So, every third position of DNA sequence, in this case of DNA, we need to predict. So, when we start to make primers against this DNA, suppose we need to make a primer against this part of the section. So, what we need to do, we need to provide some primers which are also degenerate. That means those primer can have A, G, T because there can be T, right? So, the primer complementary for that should be, remember, T, C, A or it could be T, C, uh, T or it could be T, C, G, right? Because these are the complementary, complementary of A is T, complementary of G is C. And if it is T, complementary will be A. If it is A, complementary will be T. If it is C, complementary will be G. So, in every third position of those primer is different. Must con contain rest of the four nucleotide sequences. That is the fundamental of degenerate primers. So, when you take the primer, we should take such primers which are having different varieties of nucleotides at every third position of that primer. That is called the degenerate primers. Okay. So, in each third position, we will having varying, uh, a varying type of uh, nucleotide sequences. Now, nowadays, this kind of primer making can be tedious. So, there are companies which make this kind of primers, which are called short oligos or degenerate primers oligos that can be provided by manufacturer. But nowadays, also, this term is modified using what is called inosin. Now, what is inosin? We all know that. Inosin is a type of uh, base substitute which can make pair with A, G, 
TNC, all of them, it can make pair with all of these sequences. So if you use inosine in this third place of the primer, it can uh, attach with any kind of DNA sequences. So we can use this inosine to make these degenerate primers. Now once we make these degenerate primers, we can use this primer and now using this degenerate primer can enable us to attach and say similar to the process, degenerate primers will be added, then the polymer chain reaction will be carried out. Now the advantage of this process is that Suppose we are working with a protein which is unknown, then we sequence the protein, we know the sequence of protein. Now from the protein sequence, it's not always possible to find the DNA exactly because DNA level is much more tedious to find there. So when we find protein, we know the sequence, we can back calculate to the actual sequence of the DNA after the PCR amplification because we get a very little amount of DNA, right? We need to amplify it to a large amount for the future sequencing analysis and we can only obtain it after PCR. So how can we perform PCR if you don't know the sequence of DNA? We can use degenerate primers to predict what could be the structure, right? So it's like a throwing stones in the darkness and when you find something like that, we can get it and for the future purpose, we can again sequence this DNA and you can get our result. So this is how degenerate primer works and degenerate PCR works. Okay, so that's it and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.